to serve with heart might one nation bound in freedom peace and unity give me a round of applause thank you very much the chairman of the board Number two on this list is Aisha Dahir Umar, is the director representing the Northeast Zone. May we give her a round of applause? The third on this list I have is Mr. Clement Oyedele Akintola, Executive Commissioner, Inspectorate, representing the Southwest Zone. Thanks so much, sir. The fourth on this list is Mr. IMC Nyerere, Executive Commissioner Technical, representing the South East Zone. <laughs> Thanks so much, sir. The fifth on this list is Mr. Charles E. Sylvester Emu Kuate, Executive Commissioner of Finance, representing the South South Zone. <laughs> Thanks so much, sir. The sixth on this list, I have Engineer Festus Yusuf Narai Dauda, is the permanent secretary, Common Services Office, Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation. Thank you very much, permanent secretary, sir. The seventh on the list is Mrs. Anita Ayibatari Shitu, Director of Human Resource Management, representing the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget, and National Planning. Thank you very much, ma'am. The eighth on the list is Comrade Ayuba Waba, MNI. President NLC. Thank you very much, sir. The ninth on the list I have is Comrade Dr. Buboy Bala Kaigama of the TUC, representing the Trade Union Congress in Nigeria. Thanks so much, sir. The tenth on this list I have is Dr. Ebel Afulaya, President, representing the Nigerian Union of Pensioners. Thanks so much, sir. Good to see you this afternoon. The 11th on this list I have is Dr. Timothy Oswalele Olawale. Thank you, sir. Deputy Governor, Corporate Services, CBN, representing Central Bank of Nigeria. All right, sir. With that correction noted, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes. NECA, representing Nigerian Employers Consult. Association. Thanks, sir. The 12th I have on the program is Mr. Edward L. Adamu, Deputy Governor, Corporate Services, CBN, representing the Central Bank of Nigeria. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Sorry for the mix-up, sir. The 13th on the program is Mr. Lamido Abubaka Yuguda, Director General, representing the Securities and Exchange Commission. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. The 14th on the list is Mr. Oscar Onyema, Chief Executive Officer, representing Nigerian Stock Exchange. <laughs> Good to see you, sir, this afternoon. Welcome. The 15th on this uh, list is Mr. Olurundare Sunday Thomas, Commissioner of Insurance, representing National Insurance Commission. <laughs> Thanks so much, sir. It's good to see you this afternoon. Now, the 16th on the list is the Executive Commission Administration representing the Northwest Geopolitical Zone. This one is pending the Senate confirmation of the nominee. We have just concluded the introduction of the chairman and members of board of PENCOM. It's a pleasure now on the fifth item on this program. Mr. Boss Mustafa, my colleague here, the Permanent Secretary, Common Services Office, in the Office of the Head of Service of the Federation, representing the Head of Civil Service of the Federation. Other important dignitaries here present, the Chairman, Executive Commissioners, and other representatives of very critical stakeholders here present. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it is with great pleasure that I welcome you most 
cordially to this epoch-making event, which is the formal inauguration of the Board of the National Pensions Commission. I am particularly delighted that the Secretary to the Government of the Federation has graciously agreed to preside over the bodies today's ceremony and deliver the inaugural speech. Let me particularly welcome all distinguished board members and to congratulate you all for this well-deserved appointment. It is without doubt that your appointment and representation are based on your wealth of experience and integrity. This inauguration of the pension board today provides a unique opportunity for the advancement of a new course in the pension administration in Nigeria. Permit me, sir, to mention here that the board of PENCOM is a unique mix of critical stakeholders of pension administration in Nigeria. The chairman, the director general, and four executive commissioners to respectively represent the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. The ex-official members are also drawn from various institutional stakeholders in the pension industry on the federal government side. The organized labor, the pensions union, the employer association, as well as the financial services regulatory sector. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, sir, these distinguished members of the board of the National Pension Commission, who have already been introduced to you, are seated here before you today to formally be inaugurated as a board that will pilot the affairs of the Commission in the next four years. It is therefore my pleasure, sir, and my honor and privilege to present to you these gentlemen of reputable character and integrity, sir, for your inauguration. Thank you very much, sir. Of the National Pension Commission, uh, the Director General and other commissioners and members of the board of the Pension Commission, Permanent Secretary GSO, other senior government officials here. Let me start by congratulating the chairman and members of the board over your appointments into the board of the National Pension Commission. And to say it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this momentous occasion of the formal inauguration of the board of the National Pension Commission. The Pension Commission is a significant agency of the federal government that is statutorily mandated to regulate, supervise, and ensure the effective administration of pension matters in our country. It is worthy of note that pensions as an instrument of social redistribution is at the core of contemporary national economies, including that of our country, Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, Nigeria has had its fair share of challenges in the area of pension administration, despite the constitutional and statutory provisions that guarantee pension payment. These challenges necessitated the pension reform of 2004, which introduced a mandatory contributory pension scheme for employees of both the public and private sectors, 
with very few exceptions in the public service. This was codified in the Pension Reform Act 2014, whose main objective is to establish a uniform set of rules, regulations, and standards for the administration and payments of retirement benefits for the public service of the Federation, the public service of the Federal Capital Territory, and the public service of state governments, the public service of local government councils and private sector. This reform has started yielding an envisaged success as clearly demonstrated by the accumulation and exponential growth in the funds which is currently in excess of 11 trillion Naira. As a government, we are always conscious of our responsibilities with regards to payment of pensions to eligible retirees in the federal public service. We are committed to discharging these responsibilities despite the perennial challenges, especially as caused by the global COVID-19 pandemic, manifesting in dwindling revenue accruing to the nation. In spite of the current global and economic situation, government is not relenting in its effort to ensure that all available means of revenue accrual are put to the best use for the benefit of Nigerians. Mindful of the need that Nigerians that have dedicatedly served the country are assured of a sustainable means of livelihood, the administration of the contributory pension scheme has been geared towards clearing the backlog of pension areas inherited from previous administrations and the board, the contributory and defined benefits pension scheme. It is in keeping with this resolve that Mr. President approved your appointments as members of the board of PENCOM to pilot the affairs of the commission. Your respective appointments as chairman, director general, executive commissioners, and representatives of member institutions were the outcome of careful consideration, scrutiny, and selection. As a team, government believes that you have all it takes to deliver the mandate of the Commission. Accordingly, the government expects you to leverage on your diverse backgrounds and expertise to proffer innovative and feasible solutions to challenges of the pension industry in Nigeria and ensure the implementation of sustainable pension policies. However, as a board, it is pertinent for me to remind you of your key objectives as members. One of it is principally to formulate and provide general policy guidelines for the discharge of the functions of the commission. Second, to monitor and ensure the implementation of the policies and programs of the commission and to carry out such other functions as are necessary or expedient to ensure the efficient performance of the functions of the commission under this act. You are also as a board to approve rules, regulations relating even to the issues of how the general management of the commission is run. As a board, you have the responsibility of regulating your proceedings and make standing orders with respect to the holding office, your meetings, notices to be given, the keeping of minutes of your proceedings, and such other matters as the board may from time to time determine. It is expedient that I bring this out because 
we are running a system that is heavily conflicted in terms of when you have boards and management not working together. And for that reason, I would enumerate on some few, very few things that I expect that a highly qualified board as yours should not drift into. I've had calls in my three years as secretary to the government to be an ombudsman in settling conflicts between boards and management on a daily basis. So um, I had, we had to use the sledgehammer of having either the board suspended or the management asked to step aside. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me at this juncture <clears throat> also highlight additional roles and responsibilities of the board, particularly by extension to all boards and paras of parastatals agencies and commissions as prescribed by their statutes, guidelines, and extant circulars that are issued either by the office of the secretary to the government or sometimes by the office of the head of civil service of the federation. And there are some definite things that the board are not supposed to be indulging. And one of it is that a board shall not be involved directly in the day-to-day -day management of either a parastatal, an agency, or a commission, except that board is an executive board. A minister or the office of the secretary to the government exercises control of such boards, parastatal agencies at the policy level, and those policies are always driven by the boards. So whatever the, uh, the commissions or agencies that fall under our purview, our relationships will be to ensure that the policies that are formulated by the boards are adhered to and are also implemented. The board must not operate, I mean must operate as a part-time board in accordance with extant rules that forbids allocation, sometimes of even presidential quarters or official vehicles to members on a permanent basis. Use of official vehicles by members on a permanent basis and payment of estacord allowances for only overseas travels approved by the office of the secretary to the government. On the other hand, the core function of the director general or chief executive of a board includes the day-to-day -day administration of the organization as well as providing strategic leadership for the management of that organization. You might wonder why I'm bringing this to fall, even before you start. You have served in different boards before. Uh, but one of the contentions that we are dealing with, uh, there is a board that I had to ask now uh, of, an, of, a, of a research institute that I asked the DG to go on suspension and I'm constituting a four-man committee to conduct some investigations based on the circulars that I issued uh, in May of this year. But I found out that the board was deeply involved in the day-to-day -day management of the organization. The chairman had his, he has his official letterheads. Correspondences coming out of the office of the chairman of a, of a part-time board. So to be able to resolve that, I ask that the chairman step aside and allow the other members of the board to continue to function while the director general goes on indefinite suspension until a committee set up by my office investigate some of the issues that had hindered the effective and smooth running of the organization. It is very, very important that the board and the management work in a very collaborative manner, supportive manner, but with clearly defined roles so that we avoid areas of conflict. The act setting up the pension commission provides adequately for the role of the board 
and management. And we have issued at different times circulars of government that addresses those issues. It is imperative that the objectives of the pension reform as enshrined in the Pension Reform Act 2014 should always guide your decisions and actions. Thus, in the course of your tenure as a board, you must always be mindful of the fact that hopes and aspirations of Nigerians are primarily hinged on the implementation of pension reform as a veritable instrument of social change. It should not be seen in a theoretical or abstract sense, but in terms of positive transformation of all aspects of the pension administration system that are inefficient, retrogressive, or do not address the objectives of the reform. On this very note, And on behalf of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it is my singular honor and privilege to formally inaugurate you as chairman and members of the board of the National Pension Commission. I wish you a team the best of luck in your assignment. I am confident that the commission would follow in this inauguration of the board today go into action by setting up its regulatory and supervisory activities to take the Nigerian pension industry to the next level. I thank you for your patience, and I thank you. For the time. shall work as a team to discharge our responsibilities respectively as a board and as management of PENCOM. We shall work tirelessly to surmount the problems, the challenges of pension administration in a society that is largely pessimistic. <clears throat> On behalf of myself and everyone in PENCOM, I want to register our profound appreciation to the SGF for his untiring support and guidance to our commission. In the five years that PENCOM did not have a board, that will be from 2015 to date, the office of the SGF has been our backbone. We are truly grateful for all your support, sir. We thank you for yesterday, for today, and for always. And like the proverbial Oliver Twist, we will respectfully request that even though we have a board, that the support we have enjoyed from you, sir, over time should continue. I think the support will be vital because this is a new chapter in the life of PENCOM that we are entering. So we we'll would appreciate very much, sir, if you could continue the support. Um, once again, sir, we want to assure you and all Nigerians that we shall not betray the trust that has been imposed. We are not going to fail you. We are not going to fail the president. And we are going to do what we have to do. We are going to do it well for the good of everyone. Thank you very much.
thank God for giving us this opportunity, especially in the midst of the global pandemic where many people have lost their lives. God has provided us this opportunity. And I want to use this occasion to say it is good for us to always appreciate our leaders and to say thank you. And we use this opportunity to say thank you to you, sir. You have been steering the ship in time to help Nigeria and keep Nigeria safe from the global pandemic. And thus far, it's been successful and we give God the glory. Thank you very much. Also, I thank the Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, for appointing the most technocratically diverse board in Nigeria and uh, appointing the chairman, uh, Mr. Remy Odi, who is uh, an experienced banker with decades of experience. And uh, we have a wonderful director general who has spent decades in Hencom and popularly known as Mama Pencom. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ma, for what you've done. We will stand on your shoulders to build Pencom and also improve the organization further. Further, my colleagues, whom the president have uh, uh, appointed, including myself, have decades of experience in the financial sector. Uh, we wish to assure you, sir, that we will work uh, with the board and also with your office to ensure that we deliver on the aims, objectives, and the mandate of Hencom. We also use this opportunity to call on all stakeholders most especially the state governors, that they should make sure that they make their pension contributions as at when due, so that the workers will have something to fall back on when they retire. Dead people don't need pensions. It is when they are alive that they need this pension. Hence, the contributions by the state governors is key. It is part of the strategic uh, policy of uh, our Director General of Pareto Improvement, where we will all solicit the support of one, the state governors to make sure that they make their contributions as at one due, the local go government to make their contributions as at one due. We shall also uh, make sure that we improve the services uh, efficiently and effectively so that pensioners will have what is due to them on time. Furthermore, as part of our strategic plan, we shall ensure that uh, there is uh, the investment, the, the investment portfolio of Pencom in the industry is diverse, so that there will be an increase in returns of those assets at minimal risk. I wish to use this opportunity to say to thank the staff of uh, Pencom and the past uh, board and administration of PENCO for what they are built on. Otherwise, this organization will not be where it is. And we say that uh, we will continue to improve on the service delivery and the regulatory uh, policy or function of PENCO to ensure that we have an efficient, effective, and a proud uh, pension uh, service in Nigeria. Thank you very much. God bless Pencom. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.